talk about growing on purpose this morning. Hopefully you're growing on purpose. Let's start reading in verse 8. Chapter Peter 3, verse 8. Do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promises, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? <coughs> Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, because as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men, and fall from your own salvation. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory now and forever. The day of eternity. Amen. There's an awful lot in there, isn't there? But it tells us there is a day coming when things are going to be different. There's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. Rick Wusaw, a Christian church minister in Longmont, Colorado, tells of a time when he and his wife were out with some friends eating lunch. Rick became distracted by one guy who kept slurping his soda, and he was whining because his food didn't come quick enough. And when it did come, he dropped his french fries all over the floor. Then he caught his mind... Um, he changed his mind about what he really wanted to eat. Seems that he didn't want what he ordered. He wanted what everybody else had on their plates. And just as everyone was about to pray for their food, he had to go to the bathroom. He got ketchup on the tablecloth, and he spilled his drink. But it was okay because he was only three years old. <laughs> now, if you or I did that, it wouldn't be so okay, would it? You see, you and I, we're grown-ups. We know better. We have learned what is right behavior. This three-year-old that Rick talks about, he was still learning those things. He was still growing. When we become a Christian, we start building our life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And it's natural for us as new Christians to not know everything, right? But as we, as we grow, we learn more and more, so more ought to be expected of us. It's natural for us to grow from the time we became a Christian until where we are now. That's natural. 
In fact, if, if we didn't grow, we would think something was wrong with us. You know, if that three-year-old boy was now 30 and still doing those same things, we'd think something was wrong with him, right? You and I, uh, as Christians, we ought to have grown on purpose from when we started out as new Christians. And if we don't, then we ought to think there's something wrong with us. Because there is. The last verse of this passage of Scripture, verse 16, I think it is. No, 18. says this, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, that's not an option. That's something that we're supposed to do. We must do. We must grow. Let me ask you this question. If there was one thing that you could remember that would help you to be motivated to grow, what would it be? What one thing would it, would it be that would cause you to want to grow? In verses 8 through 12 here, we see, I think, the motivation to grow. The fact is, the one thing that's mentioned here is, it says, do not let that one fact escape your notice that Jesus Christ is coming back. That ought to be motivation <laughs> For all of us to grow. Because we know he's coming back. And we don't want him to find us still in diapers. Because we're still just doing the same thing we did when we first became a Christian. The Lord is patient. He's not wanting anyone to perish. He's wanting everyone to repent. Because he's coming back, what sort of people ought we to be? Think about that. If you firmly believe that Jesus Christ is coming back, now, we don't know when, but if we firmly believe that he is coming, then what sort of people ought we to be? How then should we live? How then should we act? You see, the fact that Jesus Christ said He's coming back, and if we believe that, then that ought to make a difference on how we live. Have you ever thought about how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant the same way you eat anything else. One bite at a time. And for you and I who are growing, we don't grow just overnight. We grow in spurts. We grow one bite at a time. And as we bite off a little bit more, and we chew on that, and we grow, then we can bite off a little bit more. But you see, if you never take a bite, you're not going to have any nourishment whatsoever to help you grow so you can take another bite. We need to have motivation to keep growing. Because to not grow is to die. Let me give you seven rules for spiritual growth. Number one, take some daily food. Pure milk of the word is a good thing to take. Through Bible study, through your own personal devotions. Get God's Word and hide it in your heart. Number two, get some fresh air by praying regularly. Prayer is oxygen for your soul. So, get some good breaths every day. Pray. Number three, get plenty of exercise by putting into practice the things that you're learning. 
Because as you put things you're learning into practice, they're going to stick with you. They're going to become a part of you. Do you remember what the last part of that verse is that I just mentioned? To hide God's Word in your heart. What's the rest of it say? That you might not sin against God. You see, when it's there, and it's a part of you, you can use it. So, get plenty of exercise by practicing what you're learning, how you're growing. Number four, get plenty of rest by relying upon God and trusting Him in faith. Number five, keep your surroundings clean by avoiding every appearance of evil and anything that would help make you weak spiritually. Number six, get involved in regular fellowship with a loving congregation, loving church, so you can learn from other believers. That's one of the benefits of, of a church family. We can learn and grow together. We can learn and grow from one another. And number seven, get a periodic checkup of your spiritual health by monitoring and tracking your spiritual progress. In other words, be accountable to somebody that will tell you what they're seeing in you and how you're growing. You know, uh, though we don't like it, we... We go to a doctor because he has the, the knowledge to tell us what's wrong with us and how to fix it. Well, you and I as Christians, we, can, we, we may have the knowledge to help someone else and fix it. And so we need to have that accountable person that we, we can go to and ask, how am I doing? You know? Do you see anything I need to do better at? Anything I need to fix? We practice those things. We really remember that Jesus Christ is coming back. That ought to be the motivation for us to grow. In verses 14 through 17, we see the means for our growth. Peter uses a word in here, verse 14, the word diligence. He uses that word to help us see the means that we need to embrace in order for us to grow. Diligence means this. It means to have an eagerness, to be zealous, to have a steadfastness in the effort that we put forth. And that putting forth the effort is pretty important because we have to be putting forth the effort. The idea is of an intense effort to accomplish something whatever that might be, so that we can grow. Paul uses the very same word that's translated as diligence here in verse 14 in 2 Timothy 2.15, where he says this, Study to show yourself approved unto God. Same word. Be diligent to show yourself approved unto God. In other words, put forth the effort. Be enthusiastic about it. Be eager. We're to have diligence. We're to give an intense effort to growing to be more like Christ. And just attending church won't cut it. It takes much more than that. It takes that intense effort. And Peter here says, when we do that, when we put forth an intense effort in peace, in spotlessness, and in blamelessness, we're going to see some success. In other words, we're to live a life that has a higher standard, that has a biblical standard to it, that helps us be the Christian that God wants us to be. Growth progresses as we recognize that the, del the delay in Christ coming back is for us. It's so that we have the time to grow. It's so that we have the time to become more like Him. 
It's so that we have time to be diligent in studying God's Word and putting forth the effort to become like Him. He wants more people to be saved and to come to repentance, to turn their lives around and live for God. The means for our growing also comes as we are on guard against <coughs> things that would weaken us and pull us astray and lead us astray. And lead us away from the truth that we have come to know. You know, when, when we don't guard the seven things we talked about last week, the evil one can come in and, and has pretty much free reign in our lives. He can cause us to compromise. He can cause us to not be faithful. He can keep us from growing when we don't guard those important gates of our spiritual life. It's important that we're on guard because we do not want to fall away from this faith that we have been taught, that we have embraced ourselves. The diligence that we are to have can be seen in, in a story that John F. Kennedy uh, continually told on the campaign trail back in 1960. This is the story that he used quite often in his rallies and he, as he was trying to get elected president. It was about a colonel named Davenport who was the Connecticut House of Representatives speaker. One day in 1789, the Hartford sky was getting dark in an unusually eerie way. Now remember, this is 1789, a long time ago. Some wanted an immediate adjournment, thinking that the second coming was about to happen. Colonel Davenport, however, stood up and said, The day of judgment is either coming or it's not. If not, there is no cause for us to adjourn. If it isn't, then, I choose to be found doing my duty. Therefore, I wish the candles be brought in. So he has some light to keep on doing their business. John F. Kennedy told that story. To try to impress upon people that if he was elected president, he would do his duty no matter what. You and I, as Christians, we ought to say, we're going to do our duty as Christians no matter what. Because it's, it's that important. <coughs> the means of our growing are pretty important. We need to stick to it in order to grow on purpose. Verse 16, we find there are some mistakes to be avoided so that we can grow. You know, there, there are some things that are hard to understand about this book. Even for me, I, I, you know, I've been doing this for over 40 years. Still, I don't understand everything. But I keep trying. And I think it's important for us to try to understand what God has said because he chose to give us this book so that we could know things, so that we could have the knowledge, so that we could grow. But there are some mistakes we need to make sure we avoid. Who of us has all the answers about the second coming? Who of us knows what it's going to be? <laughs> we don't. We just know it's coming. We should avoid the trap of needing to know all the details about Christ's coming because we can't know them. The Bible even tells us we can't know them. We should avoid that mistake, that trap of wanting to have to know those things. Peter is talking here about some things that get distorted and twisted. There are People who take the scriptures and they take them out of context and they twist them around to say what they want them to say for their own purposes. We need to avoid those mistakes and those people. 
people misuse the scriptures. And here the text calls these people untaught and unstable people. <laughs> we ought to avoid those people. And the mistakes that they fall off as truth. People who misuse the scriptures, they're not people that we want to follow. They're not people that we want to believe. But yet they can tell a pretty good story. And we need to be careful that we don't swallow up the line of sinker. They distort the truth, and Peter says it causes their own destruction. These people should be avoided so they don't lead us to destruction, too. Because they're out to take as many people with them as they can. Unprincipled means deceivers. These are unprincipled men who deceive us. And they're only out for their own gain. To make a buck here and there off of us. Or to make themselves look good. They will try anything and rob us of anything that has value. These people are only looking out for themselves. Peter's warning is, avoid them. Don't mistake them for proclaimers of truth. They're not. They're mistakes to be avoided. And if we don't, if we don't avoid them, we can't grow. Because we get sucked into their lies and their failures. As we grow, we can become efficient without becoming effective. I want to say that again because it's something I want you to really hear today. As we grow, we can become efficient without becoming effective. Activity does not mean growth. We can get involved in all kinds of activities and the church can program from sunset to sundown. That doesn't mean we're doing good things all the time. That doesn't mean we're doing things that help people grow. So we, we want to try to be effective. And sometimes being effective and growing effectively has nothing to do with efficiency. We don't want to get too busy doing the wrong things. We want to be effective because we do the right things well. An early explorer of the North Pole was being very careful to chart his course every hour so that he didn't get lost and so they could reach the North Pole. At one point, however, his instruments began to show that he was further south than he was the last hour he took the readings. His instruments began to show that he was going further and further south each hour as he took readings. He was following his compass and he knew he was walking north but each hour he was further south. Now, he wasn't at the North Pole yet, so don't get ahead of him. <laughs> Eventually, he discovered that he was walking north on an enormous iceberg that was floating south. <laughs> and the iceberg was floating south faster than he was walking north. And so you see, he was being very efficient, but he wasn't being very effective. And he could have even started walking faster and been even more efficient, but he wouldn't have been any more effective because the iceberg on which he was walking was going the wrong direction. It's easy to become busy doing Christian things but not really make any forward progress in our Christian life. 
We grow older, but we do not sometimes grow any deeper in Christ. That's a problem that each and every one of us needs to address. And if we find that we are growing older but not growing deeper into Christ, then we ought to do something to change that. That's what Paul, Peter was trying to get at here in this passage of Scripture. God wants us to grow. It's natural for living things to grow. Dead things don't grow, they just stink. So don't you quit growing and die. Because you know what's going to happen. You're going to stink. So are you living or dead? Are you growing on purpose? Or are you just spinning your tires in the same old spot? Peter says this. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An option. It's a command. Grow. Grow. Grow in Christ. We're going to sing an invitation this morning. If you're not going, you want to do something out there. Come let us know about it. We'll have someone pray with you. We'll help you. Talk to you. Maybe you can become a Christian for the very first time. That's the decision you need to make. We invite you to come.